Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you, Archbishop Lori, for your kindness to me. And thanks to, uh, to Bishop Parker, to Bishop Madden, to our friend, Bishop Brennan, who's here, Bishop Campbell, uh, Monsignor Forjo, and to all of you. This is, is really something extraordinary. And I've thought about all the things that I could say this evening and things to say tomorrow. And every time I think I have it, I think of something else. Something else comes into my mind. And I'd like to be here for three hours, if you don't mind, <laughs> to say it all. But we can't do that. I had the beautiful experience of three years living in the island of St. Lucia in the Caribbean, a wonderful place. I was assigned there at Silos House in the south of the island. Our community there doesn't work with the tourist resorts or, or the places where people go for vacation. Uh, most of the folks there are hardworking laborers, a lot of them banana farmers. I was there for three years and it was a wonderful ministry. There, the rectory is called the Presbytery. It's the place where the parish office is and the priests live. Now, I remember one day two little girls came into the rectory, into the office there with their mother, and she was there for a birth certificate. In the Presbytery there, we always kept a big jar of candy on the front desk. And so when people would come in, we'd have something to offer them, just a, a little bit of hospitality to offer something sweet. Uh, I'll be honest, I ate most of the candy that was in that jar. Um, right now would be a good time to say to Father Jack Kingsbury, who might be watching, I promised um, Father Jack, who's the coordinator for the Redemptorists of North America, the coordinator of the conference, um, he's not here I won't be tomorrow for health reasons, but he lives in the same rectory with me at Sacred Heart of Jesus. He's accused me of shamelessly begging for ice cream and chocolate from the pulpit. And so I just want to say, Jack, I kept my promise. I did not shamelessly beg for ice cream and chocolate from the pulpit tonight. So anyway, the little girls are there with their mother. We're getting things together, getting all the paperwork together, all that it takes to make a baptism certificate. And the girls already know the routine. They're staring at the jar. And unfortunately, tragically, at that moment, in the jar is only one piece of candy. And so I'm trying to ignore them, and they're looking at the jar, and I'm talking to their mother, and I'm trying to let it all pass. And they're staring at the jar. And so I think, well, just go ahead. And I take out the piece of candy and I hand it to their mother because mom will know what to do. And she unwraps the candy and hands it to the oldest girl who must be about six years old. Well, she has the piece of candy and she starts to move it toward her mouth. And you should have seen the look of terror on her little sister's face as she saw that candy approach her sister's lips. And you could see the tears welling up in her eyes. She must have been about four years old and the words forming on her lips, where's mine as that candy reached her sister's mouth. And then the unthinkable happened. At that moment, her older sister bit the candy in two and gave a piece of it to her younger sister. Immediately, I thought, I would never do that for my brother, Joe. <laughs> Actually, I would do the opposite. I would take the candy, probably wave it in front of him, then put it in my mouth, swish it around a little bit, and then stick out my tongue and say, ha, 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 I got the whole thing and you didn't get any. At that moment, I realized that the opposite of selfishness is sacrifice. She went with less so that her little sister could have something. She went with less so her little sister could have more. That She went with less so that someone wouldn't be wanting. And it's only candy. But at that moment, the opposite of thinking of yourself is thinking of the other. The opposite of selfishness is sacrifice. She took less so that her sister could have more. That's exactly 
what happens on the cross. On the cross, Jesus is broken and shared for the life of the world. He goes with less so that we can have more, so much more, less life, less dignity, less love. He's seen as less than human, almost animal-like. He loses his very self so that we can become our fullest and best selves. He leaves heaven so that we can get to heaven. He becomes human so that we can become like God. By his wounds we are healed. By his stripes we are redeemed. It's him carrying the burden of our sins so that we can be sinless. He is despised so that we can be loved unconditionally and endlessly. He dies on the cross so that eternal life might be ours. He becomes powerless to make us sharers in the kingdom of God. He is thrown down, maligned, beaten, so that we can be praised and lifted up high and seated on thrones. He's nailed to the cross. He's captured and stuck to the cross so that we can be freed from our crosses. He's bound up so that we can become unbound. He's content with less, so much less, of everything, so that everything will be open to us. Jesus on the cross loves us so much that he gives up everything completely and totally. I spent my retreat and preparation for ordination here in this cathedral. Uh, I think it was God's plan because no retreat house would have me. You know, COVID. And so I spent days here and hours and I realized that the beauty of this cathedral is in its detail. First, I looked for St. Alphonsus, and it wasn't hard to find him. He's on the front door, and he's right near the chapel that holds the Eucharist in this window of the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, and he's in the Mary Chapel, the Lady Chapel, all places where a good redemptor should be. At the front door, greeting people, welcoming people into the church, uh, close to Mary and close to Jesus in the Eucharist. I, I don't know if you've taken a tour of the cathedral, but you should. Monsignor Woy can thank me for giving a plug for the cathedral. Monsignor, where are you? Thanks for your great hospitality and for all the extra work that you're doing uh, to make these days possible, these events. Take a tour sometime of the cathedral. On the walls, there's a self-guided tour. But there's something that's not on the tour, and it's right above the archbishop's chair. And you can only see it if you're seated, seated opposite him. And it's the cross, so close to the archbishop's chair. And the words, into your hands, Father, I commend my spirit so close to the bishop's chair, the cross, and words of surrender, the words of Jesus, who from the cross says, I love you so much. I love you so much. I would do anything and everything for you. All I have is yours. I pour out my very life for you. I love you so much. I couldn't love you anymore. St. Alphonse says, gaze at the passion and you will find there every reason to love God. Because there you find how much God loves you. And so Jesus on the cross is broken and shared for the life of the world. Broken and shared for our salvation. He goes with less so that we could have so much more of everything. And sisters and brothers, 
Isn't that what our mission and ministry means? I remember Sister Rita Michelle, thanks for doing the reading here tonight. We still miss you at Archbishop Borders. We're trying to scheme and plan how to get you to come back, even if it was part time. Ministry and mission. It's to go with less so that others can have more. It's to keep giving and giving until we think we have nothing left. It's to keep giving of ourselves after the example of Jesus in that window near the bishop's chair. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I give myself completely and totally to you without thinking of myself. Because the opposite of selfishness is sacrifice, and I want to give myself completely and totally to you. Take me, Lord. Break open my life and pour it out completely and totally for the salvation of the world. Isn't that what we're about day in and day out? Whether it's the convent, the rectory, the school, the outreach center, it's the clinic, it's in the parlor, in the rectory, the confessional, at the altar. It's in so many places. Who and how we are, Jesus crucified, Jesus on the cross, suffering and dying for the salvation of the world. And I dare to say that you're never truly living your vocation as priest, brother, sister, deacon, or bishop, until you yourself are suffering and dying for the salvation of the world, giving your life for plentiful redemption. Letting your life be broken and shared as Jesus on the cross. At that point, when you feel you've given all and you feel like you don't have any more to give, and I know some of you may have been there before, you've given everything for God's people in the church and you think, what more can I give? Especially when your provincial gets on the phone and calls you and says, I have something else for you to do, another job. One of our 10 or 15 jobs. As priests, we know that too. When Jim Prophet calls, another job, another ministry, and we think, we don't have anything else to give. It's then that we realize when we've given away everything, we have no more to share when we feel emptied that space that void that emptiness is where christ enters in and we realize how full we are how filled up we are with his love when archbishop christoph pierre called me on june 1st and said bruce You've been nominated to be an auxiliary bishop in Baltimore. What I really heard him say, do you ever have that kind of experience where somebody says something to you, but you hear what they're really saying? He said, Bruce, you've been nominated to be auxiliary bishop of Baltimore. And what I heard him say is, Bruce, will you spend the rest of your life in the Archdiocese of Baltimore? He said, Bruce, will you be an auxiliary bishop in Baltimore? I heard him say, will you spend the rest of your life and give all that you are and all that you have to the people of Baltimore? I heard him say, will you live and die for the people of the archdiocese? I told him, I said to him, the same thing I said on my profession day. I told 
Archbishop Christoph Pierre, the same thing I said on the day of ordination to the diaconate and the priesthood. I told him the same thing. I said the same thing that I said to Jim Brennan, my first pastor, when I got to St. Cecilia Church in East Harlem. I told him when I told the people of Immaculate Conception in the South Bronx and the good people of Assumption Parish in St. Lucia. I said it in Philadelphia too, at St. Boniface in Visitation. And only God knows what will happen now. But I say it to you. Yes. Yes. All I am and all I have is yours. Next to the bishop's chair is the cross. I give my life to you because the opposite of selfishness is sacrifice. And into your hands, Father, and into your hands, Archbishop Lori, and into your hands, Bishop Parker, Bishop Madden, into your hands, my brothers and sisters in the Latino community, in the immigrant community, in the black Catholic community, into your hands in Frederick and Hagerstown, Annapolis, into your hands in so many places and parishes, into your hands. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. <laughs>